So hopefully you've now realized that in a uniform electric field, the electric flux through a closed surface is always equal to zero. If we want to have a non-zero flux through a closed surface, we're going to either need more electric field lines going in than out, or more going out than in. But how can we do that? Well, if we consider a sphere shown here in cross section, we could get lines going out of the sphere if we placed a positive charge plus Q inside the sphere. So in this case, we now have a flux through that spherical surface. So let's calculate what the flux is equal to in this case. So let's assume that our sphere has a radius little r and we've placed a charge plus Q right in the middle of the sphere. So at the surface of the sphere, the charge in its middle is creating an electric field, which we can write as E is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q on R squared times R with a hat on. So the R with a hat on is a unit vector in the radial direction. So because it's a unit vector, it's got magnitude 1. It's not contributing anything to the magnitude here, it's just giving it the direction, which is away from that positive charge in the middle. So now if we want to calculate the flux, we can use our equation that the electric flux is equal to the integral of E dot dA and we can now substitute in E. So we've got that this is equal to the integral of one over four pi epsilon naught Q over R squared dA. Now in this case, the dot products disappeared because the electric field is going out from that positive charge and dA is always out from the surface. So these two are always parallel to each other. So that dot product disappears. So this is then equal to, we can pull all the constants out the front, and remember that r is a constant because it's the radius of the sphere, which we're not changing. So this is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q on r squared times the integral of dA. Now the integral of dA physically means here the surface area. We're summing up all the little incremental bits of the surface area, and when we do that, we get the total surface area. So we can write this as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q on R squared times 4 pi R squared, which is the surface area of a sphere. Now you can see there's a lot of things which are going to cancel here. So the 4 pi's will cancel and the R squares will cancel. And so that electric flux ends up being equal to Q over epsilon naught. Okay, so we've thrown up for this one particular sphere, but let's now imagine making the sphere bigger. As we make the sphere bigger, we've got the same number of electric field lines cutting through the sphere. So we would expect physically that the flux should not change. And mathematically, our working supports this as the R terms, the radius, dropped out of that equation. Also, if we make it smaller, then we've still got the num same number of field lines cutting through our surface. And so the flux has not changed. Now imagine if we tried to change its shape a little bit. So let's morph our sphere into a cube. In this case, once again, we've still got the same number of field lines cutting through the surface. And so again, our electric flux has not changed. So what we've just discussed is known as Gauss's law, and it can be written as the integral over a closed surface of E dot dA is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Q enclosed here is the charge enclosed within the surface measured in coulombs, and epsilon naught is just the permittivity of free space, which is 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. So this means that if we know the flux through some closed surface, we can calculate how much charge is contained within that surface. And also, if we know how much charge is contained within a surface, we can work out the flux through the surface. So for example, let's consider our dipole again. So we've got a charge of plus Q and minus Q, and let's put it within some closed surface. So in this case, the enclosed charge is plus Q minus Q, which is equal to zero. So there is zero enclosed charge. So in this case, we know that the electric flux is equal to zero. So if the electric flux is equal to zero, you might think, well, that means that the electric field is equal to zero, but that's not the case. This just tells us the flux through the entire closed surface. If we think about a little section of the surface close to the positive charge, there we've got the electric field lines going out and the area 
direction is also out. So these are in the same direction. We're going to get a positive contribution to the electric flux and hence the electric field there. Whereas close to the negative charge, the electric field lines are going in while the area vector is going out. So this will contribute negatively to the flux. And so we'll have different fluxes at different parts on the surface, but when we add together the entire flux over the entire closed surface, we're going to end up with zero.